guys, this is Erica the Goober, and if you are new to my channel, I am a freelance digital illustrator and character designer. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a few more tips on how you can grow your art Instagram account, plus I'll be answering your questions from Patreon and Instagram. so much for the overwhelming amount of support that you showed on part one of this video. If you haven't already, please go check out part one because it has a lot of helpful tips to get you started. Just like in part one, I am going to be doing a handful of shout outs in my story of Instagram art accounts from people in the comments. So far over 700 art accounts have commented their username in part one. In the comments of this video, I encourage you to go check out some other artists. You guys could follow each other and maybe like leave a comment on one of their artworks letting them know that you found them through the comments of this video. It's really a great way to branch out and meet new artists. One more thing I'd like to mention before we get started. I have a video guide up on Patreon for this video. It includes my show notes with extra details as well as answers to more questions that didn't make it into the video. Plus you'll get access to all my other posts on Patreon and your name in the credits on my YouTube videos. Be sure to check out the Patreon link below if you'd like to support the channel and make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I will have a very special guest. We talked a little bit about having a posting schedule in part one, but since then I've gotten several comments with people saying, I don't think I can post that much or I can't do that with my schedule. Posting three to five times a week was just a suggestion. That was generally the guideline that I gave for myself and I know everyone has different schedules. You have to find out what works for you. That may be one post a week or I mean even one post a month. But remember the most important thing is that you are challenging yourself. Try posting more at first and see if that works for you. If it doesn't and you find yourself struggling, you can always take it down a notch. One very important thing that I did not cover in part one is profile do's and don'ts. A professional looking Instagram profile is very important to show people that you are serious about art and it's great for developing a certain aesthetic that goes with your art. So we're gonna start with your username. Choosing a username can be really tough. I actually got my username from my first name, obviously, and a nickname my boyfriend, now husband, in high school used to call me. So Erica the Goober. If you are struggling to come up with a username, remember that you want it to be recognizable, unique, and related to you in some way. You could include your first and or last name or a nickname and maybe something to do with art like art or draws or sketches or illustration, something along those lines. You don't want to pick a name like um, like just another artist because that's too generic and it doesn't help you stand out as an individual. Generally, I would say avoid having too many numbers and special characters in your username as well. You can always go to Instagram and look at other artists you follow to see their usernames as kind of an example. Next is your name and bio. A little tip for your name, which I don't know is actual like science or whatever, is to put emojis next to it. Personally, one way that I like to find new artists is to go to other artists that I follow and look at who they are following. When scrolling through their following lists, emojis always catch my eye. In your bio, you wanna make sure that you stay professional. So start out by saying what you do. For example, you could write illustration or character design. You could also include a little bit more about yourself, your commission status, and maybe the tools you use. I like to use little emojis for my bullet points here because it makes my page a little bit more colorful too. For your bio link, you can link your website, your other social media, a shop, or your link tree where it has a bunch of different links. Don't leave your bio blank or say things like, uh, I just draw sometimes or like trash art, follow me for bad art, stuff like that. That's like really negative and it's not professional and it will not make people want to follow you. One of the most important things on your profile is your profile picture because not only will you see it there on your profile, but it will appear in other places as well. Your profile picture needs to be a good representation of your art. I use the same icon for 
everything. Um, but you don't really have to do that if you don't want to. I just like to keep things consistent. Generally, profile pictures with faces or characters with bright colors will draw attention. Since people see it in the comments, it's almost like a little ad or a preview of your work before people click on your profile. If I see a good looking profile pic, I am a lot more likely to go and visit that artist's profile. Don't use other artists' work on your profile picture. This drives me nuts because it's basically like false advertisement. Using somebody else's artwork that they worked really hard on as your profile picture is not gonna get people to come follow you because it's not a representation of your work. That's why I don't let people use my work as their profile pictures unless it was commissioned. The last thing I want to touch on before we move on to questions is momentum. Momentum is a huge part of growing your art account. Your account growth will be the slowest ever in the beginning. Sometimes it takes years to get to your first 1000 followers. It definitely did for me, but it's kind of like the snowball effect. You'll start out small and slow, but once you get rolling, you'll start growing faster. The tips in part one of this video should definitely help you get going to get some momentum. The three things that helped me the most in the beginning were being active and consistent, doing draw this in your style challenges, and having my work shared by other artists with a larger following. When I hosted my first draw this in your style challenge at 5k, I quickly grew to 10k because a lot of people were, I guess, participating in the challenge and then more people would see it. So more people visited my profile. After that, my follower count went up exponentially and it just continued to grow until like the past few months where I stopped posting as much. So consistency is very important. Make sure you celebrate milestones and keep track of your growth to see trends. To do this, I keep a page in my bullet journal where I write down different milestones and I keep track of the date that I achieve those milestones. Now I'm going to answer some questions from you guys from Patreon and Instagram. What are the best hashtags? So you wanna make sure you use hashtags that are relevant to your specific post. I do have general hashtags that I use, but they're all art related. These include art, artist, my art, artist on Instagram, drawing, painting, procreate, or Photoshop, depending on which one I'm using, digital art, illustration, character design, and character art. How many hashtags should you use? I've always heard like around 13-ish, but I don't know if that's like, true or not, I definitely use more than 13 most of the time. I would say a general rule is do not be too spammy. Like you don't want to do more than 30 hashtags. Do you think having an art style is a big part of growing an art account? I think it definitely helps because if you see a post with an art style you like, you'll probably go follow that person to see more art in their signature art style. But by all means, do not worry about this in the beginning at all. Don't even think about it. Your art style will develop over time as you draw and learn more. Is there such thing as too much variety in your work, like realism to cartoon? I really think it depends on what you're aiming for. Like for me, I'm not gonna post like a realistic portrait of somebody that I drew on my Instagram just because I think like I'm known for a more cartoony style and that's what I enjoy doing the most. But that's just me. Like you could post a variety of stuff or you can, you know, do a variety of art but only post a certain kind of work on your Instagram. Remember that you don't have to post everything you create. Some things can just be for you. I want to post more often. I find it hard to post at least once a month. I post rarely, but I want to change that. What can help? For an art account to be able to post more, you have to create more. I kind of like touched on this in part one, but like I started my Instagram account so I would get myself to draw more. So I like, that was my posting schedule thing. I was like, I'm gonna post every day. So I would get myself to draw every day. You have to have the art to post. So you have to make Taking the time to sketch every day will help you build up more things to post. So, you, I mean, you could sit down for like an hour or so and sketch out a bunch of things on a page and then only post like one little thing at a time. So you have like 
multiple days worth of posts. You can even go back and color your sketches for additional posts. So you could do this traditionally or digitally. I have a, another video about how to photograph and color your sketches digitally, which I will link in the description. If you feel like you don't have enough time, you gotta make the time. If you really, really want to do this, like you gotta make some time. Could cut down on time, like scrolling through your phone because that's my problem. You could wake up 10 minutes earlier and just do a little quick sketch. Or I mean, get a napkin at work on your lunch break and just doodle with a pen. I mean, it's something. In 2017, when I was posting like every day, I would rush home from work and like I had 30 minutes to do a post to post that day at five o'clock. So I would get home and I would sketch something or I would color a sketch and have it ready to post in 30 minutes or less. And I would do this every single day. So I would have like more time to sketch and to have something to post. What do you post if you're too busy to post full art pieces regularly? If you want to do more full illustrations, but you still want to have more things to post, I would consider posting like works in progress or different steps in your process. So for one illustration, I could post the sketch. I could post like a work in progress. I could post the final piece. I could do um, detail shots and I could also post a speed painting or like a little clip of a speed painting. So that's five posts out of one illustration that you work on. What do you think about the dilemma quality over quantity? How much does quality affect your growth? I definitely think it's good to balance the two because they are both very important. When starting out, don't worry too much about creating the perfect piece to post. This will make you more hesitant to post things because you're striving for perfection and not for growth. Plus, producing more work will help you learn faster. Quality is also very important for your growth, but you have to remember that it takes a lot of time and effort to achieve quality. It requires you to really focus on improving your work. Think about it from another perspective. Say that you see an artwork on Instagram and you're like, oh my gosh, like who did this? Like, this is amazing. Um, this is like so high quality. And you go to their profile and you follow them because of that artwork. So really the artwork spoke for itself. You didn't need any like special tricks to uh, convince somebody to come over. It's like the artwork itself, the quality of the artwork got you to come over and follow somebody. But quality and quantity go hand in hand because in order to produce a high quality artwork, you have to put in the hours and practice by creating a high quantity of artwork. What about fake likes that some people offer for your account? Are those valid? Okay, so fake likes. Think about it. 200 likes from a post of fake bot accounts that will probably get deleted by Instagram soon. Or 50 likes from actual people who care about what you're making. These bots will not engage with your account in any kind of meaningful way. So if you're out there paying for likes on posts for your art account, I think that you probably should reevaluate some things and think about like why you're doing it and what's really important. How do you deal with losing followers? First off, I'm going to start off by saying you should focus on things that you can control. You can't control if people unfollow you and there's no use stressing about it. With my account type, it shows me exactly how many people unfollow me each day. This Fun little graph shows me that about 100 people unfollow me every single day. And it's consistent ever since I could see it. Since that is the case, it makes me think that these are not all real people and they could be bots or like inactive accounts that are getting deleted. But if they are real people, it really doesn't make a difference because I can't change the fact that they wanted to unfollow me. So why would I worry about it? What are some ways you can keep the followers you have? I would say just keep making content and engage with the people who do follow you, who comment and respond to their comments or their messages. You could even follow them back and comment on their posts as well. Just remember to focus on what you can control. The last topic that I wanna cover is negativity. I got a surprising amount of responses from people being 
very negative, talking negative about themselves or their artwork. Like, is my art that bad? Or why does my art suck so much? I see this kind of like talk in people's bios and their post descriptions. And it seems to mostly be younger artists who are still really developing their skills and learning. But regardless, like, please guys, don't do this. Don't talk about yourselves like this. It doesn't help anything. It actually like, it hurts you. It hurts your growth and your mental health. It's just not good for anything. A good skill to develop is to look at your work critically from a growth standpoint without being negative. In one of the podcasts I listened to, The Perfectionism Project with Sam Laura Brown, she talks about having a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. In a fixed mindset, you are focused on the end goal or the outcome. In a growth mindset, you are focused on the journey and learning. So anytime you fail, that is just a way for you to learn and improve. The people who are saying these negative things about themselves are currently in a fixed mindset. They are looking at their art and saying like, this is not where I want to be. Like I have a vision of what I want, but I'm right here and I can't change it. Like it sucks. I can't do anything about it. I'm stuck. But that's not the kind of like attitude or like thought process you should have. People in a growth mindset will look at their art, be able to see, okay, um, I need to work on drawing anatomy more and they will take a just take one step to practice that to learn that and they will keep building on their knowledge to grow their art into something that they are proud of i have this quote like on my computer uh, on a post-it note that i think i heard in a video i'm not really sure what which video it was but i liked it a lot so i wrote it down focus on the next smallest action you can control. Don't look too far ahead. Praise yourself for the effort regardless of the outcome. I think this perfectly encapsulates the mindset that I try to have like in regards to art, especially when trying something new. Now I'm going to bring in our special little guest. Some of you guys might know from my Instagram stories that we have a new goober in the family. Meet Oakland Peabody Wiseman, or Oakley for short. Oakley is a shipu, so he is a Shih Tzu poodle mix, and he seems to like the camera. Look at you. You're being good, aren't you? I think he sees himself in the reflection. You're being so good, aren't you handsome? So next time you, yes you, are thinking about talking negatively about yourself, remember this face. Look at this face. Oakley loves you. Don't you, Oakley? Yes. Oakley loves you. Oakley wants you to succeed. He wants you to succeed. Remember his face. Do not post it. Do not think it. Do not be negative. Be positive. Don't make Oakley sad. Don't make me sad. But yeah, this is Oakley. Finally wanted some screen time too. Oh, hugs. You got stinky boy breath. Don't you? I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters this month. We do have a few new and upgrading supporters, including Brandy Nicole Snaps, LJ Johnson Art, Quirky Cute Art, Magali S. Carranza, Ashima Casa de Kim, Mooney Light Art by TMB, Natosha Doodle, Miss Malin, Lexi Heron, Alejandra Erica Santian, and Peck Three. Thank you guys so much for supporting my art and the YouTube channel. Don't forget you can check out the Patreon link below to see a list of all of the tiers and rewards. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more art videos like this one. Don't forget to comment your Instagram art account name below for a chance to get a shout out in my Instagram story. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!